personal finance excel practice problem earnings per share and price earnings ratio prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance here we are in our excel worksheet if you don't have access to it that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet but if you do have access we got three tabs down below example practice blank example answer key let's look at it now information on the left calculations on the right we're imagining we're evaluating stocks possibly to be investing in them remember that a corporation is a separate legal entity breaking out the ownership into standardized units those being stocks we're typically thinking about stocks that are publicly traded meaning the corporations are traded on the public exchanges we're going to do common ratios here being the earnings per share and then the price earnings ratio calculations the second tab the practice tab will have some pre-formatted cells so you can work the practice problem with less excel formatting and then the third tab the blank tab will do the excel formatting if you don't have any of this that's okay you can open up a blank sheet and just format the cells yourself you're not going to have this item here but that's okay you just format the worksheet i would do so by clicking the triangle right clicking on the selected sheet and then go to the format cells i usually start with currency brackets and red and uh no dollar sign no decimals that's the starting point i'm not going to hit okay but instead x out because i already have it here and then you can add your data on the left hand side and make a skinny c column and then we're good to start working in cell d1 so information on the left we got the company information we got the earnings now when we think about the earnings we're calling it earnings because it's the earnings per share and notice you kind of get confused on these calculations or the or the names that we often use for earnings say net income sales net sales gross sale you know some of these terms can be a little bit confusing we're talking about basically the net income generally so when we're thinking about the earnings per share calculation we're typically thinking about the net income of the company and divided by the average outstanding shares of the company so we're going to start thinking about it just by basically dividing by the shares of the company so and we could get a little bit more complex on it which we might do in some future calculations taking the net income of the company minus the dividends to preferred shareholders if there are any there might not be any preferred shareholders because they would get paid first and we're thinking about common shareholders divided by the average outstanding shares of the company note that this average is here because the net income number the top number here is on uh the income statement a timing statement so it's showing the earnings of the company over uh, a time frame typically let's say a year for example and there and then the number of shares outstanding is as of a point in time so you could take the number of shares outstanding as of basically the end of the year but if there was has been changes in the number of shares then you might try to get get an average of the number of shares which is not a perfect uh, calculation because again we've got two different kind of time frames happening here the, the top number represents income or net income that has been earned throughout the entire year the bottom number is as of a point in time basically if there was no change in the shares outstanding which could be quite common for many stocks if they're if they're not issuing new stocks or doing splits or anything like that then the average outstanding shares would be the same as the number at the end you know of the period okay so this represents the net income it would be on uh the financial statements of the company on say the income statement the shares of common stock this would be something that would be on the financials too possibly the balance sheet we're looking at possibly the equity section breaking up assets minus our liabilities equals the equity the equity then allocated to the owners the owners not being listed by people but by shares by units of shares many people can be owning multiple shares uh, for example so we need to know how many units of ownership are are out there and so that's going to be this number here now don't get thrown off by the large numbers as well because the ratios the comparison of ratios a ratio so so it'll work the same if we had a, a large numbers or or cut a bunch of zeros off of them right and then we've got the stock market price uh is going to be the 40 this is something determined by the market by supply and demand based in part on the financial statements you would think because that would be driving people's supply and demand but it's based on the market okay so given that we're going to do the earnings per share calculation so earnings per share i'm going to make this a little bit larger here 
going from D, making this larger. So here's the formula. You can think of it as the net income of the company, which is the earnings. And, and again, that number, remember earnings is representing the net income. So be aware of that revenue oftentimes is the top line of the income statement, net income, bottom line of the income statement, earnings. And then we're not gonna subtract any dividends. We're gonna assume that there aren't any preferred uh, dividends in this case. So I'm just gonna take earnings and then divided by the outstanding shares. And again, we're not gonna do the averaging here, which would mean if you had to average them, you might you might take the, you'd have to figure out or find on the balance sheet or the financial statements for the end of the prior period, how many shares were outstanding and then find the shares outstanding at the end of the current period that you are looking at. Okay, so let's make the header black and white. I'm gonna select these two tabs up top, the cells, home tab, font group, make this black and white. And then I'm gonna pick up the earnings, which I'm just gonna say is equal to the earnings. And this is gonna equal the 6,500,000, which again, we could find typically on the income statement. And this is gonna equal the shares of common stock. So this is the number of units that are out there of ownership, multiple people, one person could own multiple shares, for example, 2,900,000. And we're gonna put an underline there. And then that's gonna be our earnings per share. So this will be equal to the 6,500,000 divided by the 2,900,000. And let's add some decimals, home tab, number group, adding some decimals. So note, you could get more complex if they had, if they had preferred stock, subtract out the preferred stock. You could do some different methods with the common stock if there was a different number or amount of common stock at the beginning and end of the period, possibly trying to take an average to get you know an, an average number. So that's going to give us our earnings per share of the two point or two dollars and twenty four cents. So let's make this let's make this blue and bordered home tab font group and I'll make this a border all borders and then blue with the bucket and that's the blue but i'm going to go down to more colors if you don't have it standard i usually pick that one right there and okay so there is that now that's something that we can of course use to to compare to other other companies or stocks that we're thinking about investing in so if this is if this is the earnings uh the total earnings of the company we break it out into the standardized units so one share then had the earnings of two dollars and 24 cents would be the general idea so that doesn't however mean that we got dividends of that amount you might say well if i if they got earnings if the company earned net income of six million five hundred thousand and each that means each share earned two dollars and 24 cents you might think first well i should get a dividend for that but no, the company's gonna decide whether or not they're gonna issue the dividends or not. If they could issue the dividends for that, but they, but they or something, you know, but, but they may not. It depends on the board of directors and management. Or you might think that the stock should go up in value by that amount, which it may because, because the stock price is gonna be dependent, of course, on the earnings of the company to some degree, but that number will be dependent upon the market. So now we can say, okay, Let's try to give a relationship between the earnings per share, the performance of the company on a per share per unit, per standard uh, component of unit basis to the market price, which is $40. So let's make a skinny F column over here. I'm gonna hit the skinny C and do the paintbrush and make a skinny F. And we'll call this the price earnings ratio. And let's make this larger as well. G will make that larger. Let's make black and white up top. We're gonna go to the home tab font group, make this one black and then white. And so now we're just gonna take the stock price, which we're saying is $40, $40 per share. So each share that we purchase, and there's 2,900,000 of them out there we're at $40. How do we know what that is? Because all the shares are the same and some shares are trading. So you would think that if people are currently trading all these things that are equal in value for whatever they're trading for $40, that would mean that all the shares would be worth $40. That's a little, that's a little bit uh, confusing or not exactly accurate in that if one person owned, for example, a large portion of the shares, like, like, uh, like Elon Musk owning Tesla stock or something like that, and they started to sell their shares, you would think the price would drop, right? 
But if some nobody, right, just we own a few shares in our portfolio, sell a few shares, it's not gonna have an impact on the market. You would think they would be worth the $40, right? Because that's what they're currently selling for. Okay, so then we're gonna be picking up the earnings per share. This is how much the company is making per share. That 2.24 is what we estimated. Let's go to the home tab and then numbers add some decimals. Let's put an underline font group and underline. So that's gonna give us our the price earnings ratio, which is gonna be equal to $40 divided by the 2.24. We'll make this one home tab uh, numbers add some decimals. So we're saying that the revenue that's being generated is is two dollars and 24 cents per share and we're paying 40 dollars which is you know 17 times that amount of earnings on a per share basis now whether or not that number is high or not is is generally thought of as a relative kind of thing because we're trying to think how is this stock performing in comparison to other stocks now you could think of course that the whole stock market is overvalued right we're in a we're in a, some kind of stock bubble or something like that but, but generally, of course, we're trying to think what's the, what's the valuation of one company related to similar companies. So these numbers then would, could be compared to other stocks, typically stocks like in the, same, in the same area or possibly to indexes, for example. So the other way you could think of this, of course, is if you had the, the $2.24, let's add a couple decimals. And then we multiply that 17 times, 17 times the earnings, that's gonna give us our price. So it's earning $2.24 per share. So if, if we bought that share, we would be paying $17.85 or 17.85 times the last yearly earnings uh, at the $40 is, the, is what that's basically saying. So that's a common, kind of uh, ratio that we can use for comparisons. Let's make this blue and bordered here, home tab. Let's go to the font group, border and blue. And let's make this one a little skinnier. We can skinnierize this one and delete this. Quick spell check on it. Review, check in the spelling on it. Okay, so there we have it. We'll probably see, that we will see those ratios multiple more times in the future. They're, they're fundamental.